In this video, I'll be showing you how to do this cooling system uh, mod to your Nissan L28 cylinder head, <clears throat> as well as explaining kind of why you would want to do this um, and giving you kind of an in-depth of how to build this exact uh, system. The tools you're going to need are pretty basic. Um, you're just going to need a drill, um, a couple drill bits, a tap for the cooling fittings you're going to be using, um, a file for deburring any drills, drill holes, or and then I also am going to need a where's the quarter inch tap? I don't have it with me, but you're going to need a quarter inch uh, NPT tap as well, and the correct drill bit for that. So over here we have a P90 cylinder head. Um, and in this head you can actually, there's a boss kind of embroidered or stamped uh, uh, into the casting of this cylinder head, right where you need to drill the ports. So um, you need to drill right above each uh, cool, uh, exhaust port. There's a coolant galley, one right here, one right here, two right here, because there's two ports, one here. And then obviously you have your thermostat right here. So you can kind of get a look down in there and the, uh, the coolant flows around the combustion chamber. And the problem with these cylinder heads is the way they flow, cylinders five and six run hot. They run way hotter than the rest of everybody else. And uh, on high horsepower engines or turbocharged engines like mine, that becomes a problem and you detonate and blow piston rings on five and six probably once a year if you're not very good at tuning. So uh, we're going to do this mod. We're going to drill into the passage here, tap it for a quarter inch NPT to three eighths hose barb fitting. Um, three eighths I felt was a pretty good uh, size line for flow. And uh, you can go with, uh, if, you, if you can fancy the parts, you can get a dash six line and do braided steel. Um, but anyway, um, so essentially the mod, what you, what's gonna happen is when the coolant flows through the block into the head, it's gonna go through the head and it's gonna exit out here. And it's gonna get, like I said, it's get hot on five and six. So what we're going to do is we're going to kind of reroute the way the coolant goes, or the way the coolant exits the cylinder head. We're going to drill the holes out. The coolant's going to come out of these fittings and go into the bottom of the thermostat housing. So I have, obviously, my ex uh, example here. So you can see I have the fittings drilled here on the head, and then I've made this rail system. So this has an 11 16 inch bore. Um, and it's all 3 8 lines down here. And then it goes into a 5 8 hose into the bottom of the thermostat. I didn't want to bypass the thermostat just because that's going to cause issues with heating uh, and the car warming up. So I just wanted to keep it somewhat streetable. Um, and then I also I have the intake manifold on here and the fuel rail to check for clearance. And uh, when you drill these holes, it's very... Very smart to uh, take your time and really kind of like lay the gasket down and see where your gasket lays in relation to where you're going to be drilling these holes. And I went, you know, even further as to put the intake and the exhaust manifolds on and then uh, held the fittings up to the spot where I was going to drill. So... Like I said, uh, I just marked it out here for you, kind of roughly where you want to drill. Um, on this particular cylinder head, like I said, it has these uh, stamped boss, but on this one that I already, oh, it this cylinder head's machined smooth. Um, this is an N47 head. This one's machined smooth. Uh, instead of on this one where it's only machined where the flange is and it's still cast right here. Anyway, this is what it looks like when you're done drilling and tapping each hole. So there's one here, 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 
and here. So we have above number two, three, four, five, and six. So usually everybody just does numbers five and six and they plumb them into your thermostat housing, maybe here and here with a, when you, or somewhere where you don't need a sensor. But I went the extra mile and I went and I did every cylinder. And then, um, so now uh, you can see I use like a Sharpie to kind of uh, tell me where my guidelines are for where to drill the hole. And then I have, like I was saying earlier, this is a rail. I bought this rail at Summit Racing. It's a blank fuel rail. It cost me $29.99 or something like that. I'll put all the part numbers in the description of everything I bought and like a total of how much this exact setup would cost you to do yourself. So this is a blank fuel rail, anodized black. It's 20, 24 inches long total. I, I cut it down. Um, you can get them in all sorts of different bore sizes, um, colors, raw material, raw finish. Anyway, so on the bottom here, it's uh, blank. It's a custom, it's a, it's a build it yourself rail. So you drill out and tap each hole, or I did at least. Drilled out and tapped five holes. And I had the rail kind of sitting where I would want it, where I knew I would want it. And I was able to mark the holes, use a punch to uh, kind of mark center of the hole so that your drill bit doesn't walk on you. If you don't have a punch, you can actually use a like a Phillips head bit for a drill gun. It's, it's aluminum, it, it scores really easy. So you just, you know, you hit it real quick and uh, your drill bit will, won't really walk on you. But anyway, um, and then you're gonna need five of these elbows. These are, oh, these are quarter inch NPT thread, 90 degree to 3 8 hose barb, right? And these are going to thread into your head that you just tapped. And make sure when you run the tap in, run the tap in all the way. Or else if, or else if you don't, it's just going to thread like this far and it's going to get stiff. And you really want these threads to go pretty deep in. An NPT thread is a tapered thread. So it gets tighter the deeper it goes. And it seals itself. So we're going to put these fittings in. We're going to get these fittings in. And uh, I'll show you what the, what the rail looks like on the head and then I'll explain to you kind of how it flows, how it works, why you would do this, I guess. Like I said earlier, just cause it's, uh, get the, uh, keep the coolant cool, um, especially in cylinders five and six. So we'll get that straight up. And then I went ahead and I have this fitting. This is just a common Chevy small block uh, heater hose attachment for like a uh, intake manifold and I drilled the boss out that was right here originally um, there was a fitting this one originally this uh, this fitting was here for like the throttle body heater for the I don't even know it was there it was too small um, I didn't I didn't want to limit the flow on these 3 8 uh, lines. I was worried that if I did a 3 8 to a 3 8, like if I teed them all into one 3 8 line, it wouldn't have been enough flow. So I wanted to get it as much flow as possible without making it too ugly. Um, so I opted for a 5 8 line. That still might be too small, but um, for now, I'm going to test this system and I'll make a, another post or something about how well it works or how well it doesn't work. But the theory is to get the coolant into the cylinder head from the bottom and just out the cylinder head as quick as possible and then back under the thermostat just to so that the warm up of the car and the heater functions properly. <coughs> and then so now I'm going to I'm going to put the rail on and kind of give you guys a demonstration of how that would uh, flow and how it would look. Okay, so this is what it looks like pretty much assembled. There's no clamps, and obviously there's going to be a hose in these three locations. But just just to give you a quick idea, because I'm not fully finished with the rebuild of this motor, so I'm kind of keeping everything loose for now. Um, I'll, I'll fully assemble it once it's on in the car, 
and getting set up. So where we're at right now is we have this end that I chopped off. This is gonna get plugged. I have a, a piece of aluminum. I'm just gonna weld to it, but you could drill and tap it and put a plug in it. And same with this side. Um, you can drill and tap these rails. This particular one, the, oh, you're not gonna see it. The walls are really thin here. So I was gonna put like a half inch thread NPT in here and do a half inch fitting, but it ended up that it's just, I'm not comfortable tapping on how thin that material is, so I'm just gonna weld it. And I'm gonna do the same on this side. So I bought this fitting, it's 5 8 hose barb with whatever threads on the end. And I'm just gonna take it, I'm gonna chop the threads off, clean this anodizing off. Same with here, I'm gonna clean the anodizing off and I'm just gonna TIG weld it. Uh, just, you know, on, or if you have a, like, wire feed, MIG, aluminum, like a sp spool gun setup, you can do that. So, or JB Weld, who cares? I don't care. <laughs> this, uh, this hose right here is 5 8 hose, goes into the bottom of the thermostat, and that's pretty much what it looks like. So this is pretty much what it's all going to look like, assembled. I did it this way with the rail, just because I didn't want, uh, five five different 3 8 hoses running through the engine bay and I just I wanted to do it a simple and clean way and I found that this was the nicest looking and aesthetically pleasing way to do it um, I don't know like I said earlier I don't know the flow characteristics of five 3 8 lines going into one 11 16 inch bore into a 5 8 hose I don't know how the restrictions are going to be I will post a later video or a later forum post on uh, the Dotson page kind of addressing that and uh, in the future how I feel about it if it's good or if it's bad but other than that um, I think that's it